uh, through 16. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 13 through 16, you get that same man. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse 13, it said this, till I come, give a tennis of reading to exaltation to what? Doctrine. So Paul gave, gave Timothy clear detail about how he wanted to give a tennis of reading to exaltation also to what? Doctrine. Verse 14, the neck not the gift that is in thee, will be given thee by the prophecy with the land of the hands of the Presbyterian, which is the elders of the church. He said, Meditate on these things and give thyself holy to them, that I may confirmate that that thou come may appear to what? Take heed to thyself and to the what? See, continue in them. What is them? Continue in the doctrine. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that what? So the word saved, that don't mean they're going to get saved as for for salvation. The word saved, they mean they keep you from danger. Uh, they keep you from going down the wrong path. And, and it saves you from false information. And so Paul said, you continue the doctrine that he's been taught. He said, you should save thyself and them that would hear thee. He said, so this is very important about this thing called doctrine. And so let y'all be having a seat on my prayer. Father, we thank you for the service tonight. We thank you for those that are here tonight. We ask you to bless tonight, the Holy Ghost of God. We ask you to move in our service. We ask you to uh, meet with us in a special way, Lord. We ask you that we uh, learn something tonight that we can take home and apply to our life, Lord. And I ask you to bless now. I like to tell you, I love you, God the Father. I love you, God the Son. I love you, God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name, the church said, Amen. 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 And so we talk about this word, doctrine. And some people say, well, I don't think doctrine is important. Doctrine is very important because some people don't believe that heaven is real. So the doctrine of heaven that anybody that gets saved will have eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's a doctrine that salvation is by grace through faith that not your sin is a gift from God. It's the doctrine of salvation that salvation is through Jesus Christ and Him alone is the man who must repent towards God and put their faith in Christ. That's a doctrine. You got to go through Jesus to get saved. That's a doctrine of salvation. You have a doctrine of heaven, the heaven where God's throne is, and that, that God dwells there, and that heaven's a place that all know that is saved going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven one day. And so that's a doctrine. Some people teach that only 144,000 people are going to hit heaven. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall talk on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so that's a false doctrine saying that only 144,000 people are going to heaven. Then you got some people don't believe in hell. When the Bible speaks more about hell than do heaven, so it's a doctrine of hell. And so if you said, if you say, well, how's the doctrine not important? It is important. If you don't believe in hell, why did Jesus come and die for our sins? Why would Jesus come and die for our sins if hell wasn't real? Why would Jesus preach about hell? Why would Jesus give a story about a rich man in hell? Why would Jesus say, well, the worm God not and the fire is not quenched. What hell fire? Why would Jesus talk about hell in the, in, the, in, the, in the book of Matthew? Why would Jesus talk about hell in Mark and Luke and John? Why would Jesus talk about hell in the book of Revelation? And hell wasn't real, so there's a doctrine of hell that hell is a literal place where people actually go. They have, I can go to hell, God will judge them on hell to the lake of fire. That's a doctrine. And so doctrine is very important. And Paul said, Timothy, Continue in the doctrine that I have learned. Why? Right? And by doing that, it's to bring profit to yourself. It's to save thyself. And then that what? Hear me. Imagine y'all came to church and I said, hell ain't real. Hey, imagine people start coming to church and I said, only 144,000 people going to heaven. Hey, why am I say that saved one real? Yeah. And so my point, all these are key doctrines. So by me knowing true doctrine, it can save me from danger, but also it can save me from some danger, see? And so Paul told Timothy, he said, take heed to thyself and to the doctrine continue them, for it's going this not so both save thyself and them that what? Hear thee. When there's a doctrine of eternity life, that once a person gets saved, God take away your sins, and God did his righteousness, and with that you have eternal life. That once a person gets saved, they have eternal life in Christ, and they can't go to hell. Now, that's a doctrine of eternal life. And once you say you always say. What means that once you accept Christ, it's nothing you can do to stop you from being saved. But some people say, well, you can't lose your salvation. And so what am I talking to you that you backslide that you lost your salvation? That's a dangerous doctrine. That you think I got to save all over again because I'm a bastard. So doctrine is very important tonight. And that's why Paul said.
Holy continue to them. Why? Because they had to save thyself and them that what? Henry Timothy was a pastor of the church of Ephesus, which is the book of Ephesians. And so Paul told Timothy, by you continuing sound doctrine, you will, you will keep some people from going down the wrong path and also keep yourself from going down the wrong path. And so what I'm saying tonight, we're talking about being a Baptist tonight, and we're talking about first we're talking about uh, two weeks ago, we're talking about the B and, and, and Baptist stand for what? Biblical authority. We said the Bible is the sole authority and not the final authority. See, if there's a final authority, then you compare the Bible with some other information. But when there's a sole authority, that you don't compare the Bible with no other book, and the Bible has the sole authority. God said He magnified His word above all His what? Name. Now you say it. Psalm chapter 138, verse number 1 and 2. He said, He magnified His word above all. He said, Forever, O Lord, thy word is shut in heaven. He said that in Psalm 119, verse 89. Hey, the Bible was saying that, 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 that the Lord gave the word, and great was the comfort of those that published it. He said that in Psalm chapter 16, verse number 9. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Jesus said, Man, it's not in my word, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4. Hey, you know what I'm saying? God said, His word was shut in heaven. And the Bible is the sole authority. And so if I don't know how to be a husband, I can go to the Bible. I don't know how to be a man of God, I know how to go to the Bible. I don't know how to be a dad, I go to the Bible. I don't know how to be a good sister, I go to the Bible. The Bible has all the answers that you need tonight, y'all. Y'all women, the Bible is a biblical authority. Be the best have a biblical authority. That you don't take my opinion, I don't take your opinion, but the Bible says that God be true in every man of what? Bible. So I take the Bible on my mama, I take the Bible on my wife say, what my mother say, what I say. Why? The Bible says that God be true in every man of life. I do ask some friends like this. And God's so good, why do that bad thing happen to good people? First of all, why do a good God do good things for bad people. Hey, Amen. And not why do a love of God, a lot of bad things that happen to good people. And the Bible says there is none good. Hey, no, not one. And so that's a false statement. And man, I mean, I say, why did God allow things happen to the innocent? Why do you let the innocent die? I said, the Bible said, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed from all men. But I always say, so it's not God's problem. No, I mean, Adam sinned against God. And Adam called sin to come on this earth. And so people die. And so if not, why do God allow? Why do God, good God allow bad things happen to good people? And no, why do a good God do good things for bad people? Amen. And so I want you to understand the Bible, that the Bible is a soul authority. And so whatever somebody tells you, say, make sure you got a Bible verse for that. Hey, hey, if I, if I say this, hey, say, Pastor, you got a Bible verse for that? Hey, hey, if I say line on line and preach up on preach up, he a little, there a little. So Paul said, I mean, I, in the book of Isaiah, he said, prepare scripture. I mean, English, he said, compare scripture with scripture. Line upon line, precept on precept. Here, letter, there, letter. What I'm saying, compare scripture with scriptures. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, the Bible is a final authority. If other religion, they got the Bible in other books. Like the Jehovah, they got a New World Translation. Like the Mormon, they got a Book of Mormon. We don't have a Baptist Bible. We don't have a Baptist press. Hey, the, the, the Mormons and the Jehovah, we don't have their own press. And they got their own Bibles to teach what they want, they, 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 they Bible say, according to their belief. But we don't, we don't make a Bible to, 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 to bad our belief. Of. We take the Bible and let the Bible determine what we believe. Amen. And so the being Baptist is, is biblical authority. They want the Baptist all the time. They have always, the old fashioned separatists, Baptists, independent Baptists, have always taken the Bible over uh, over man. That's why a lot of Baptists I'm going, oh, I'm going to start to a little more about Baptist history and some time down the road. And my point it is that the Baptists have been martyred and the Catholics have killed the Baptists. The Baptists have, hey, do you know they were Baptists that have caused us to have our constitution? You know the Baptists and our, our, our and Baptist preachers came and preached dust, shed the Lord, and our country started saying the Bible. Baptists, I know we have a history, y'all. We have a but we have a bloody history. We've been killed. We've been crucified upside down. We've been born and all, all the time. We would not uh, be part of the, the Catholic. They try to say we're Protestant. We're not Protestant. We didn't protest anything. We never were with the Catholics. Like the Lutherans and the, and the, and the Methodists, they were one point, one point in time, they're part of the, uh, the, the, the Catholic and they protest the Catholic. But we're not Protestant. Don't let them out there that you're a Protestant. We never protest. Now, we never part of the Catholic. We never part of Catholicism. Hey, we Baptists, amen. And we got a bloody history. So that being Baptist, this is a biblical authority. And the Baptists of old have always chosen the word of God over man's opinion. Amen. So when the devil didn't talk to y'all about something, 
and said, Devil, you got a verse about that? See, when you know your Bible, what it does is make you make sure that the Bible is the best. Have, find, have the soul of the in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so take the Bible over Dr. Fields' say. Take the Bible over Oprah Winfrey's say. Take the Bible over Dr. Oz. Listen, the Bible is a soul of authority. And once you make the Bible so for your life, if you start magnifying the word of God, which is already magnified, God starts lifting you up. Because you lifting up his word. Biblical authority. What does being better stand for? Biblical authority. Do you know that? I'm going to move on with this. The average church don't make the Bible the biblical authority. Mm -hmm. It all what the pastor say, what the motherboard say, what the member say, what the board say, what the deacon say. It ain't about it. Ain't, it ain't all about what the pastor say. It's all about what the Bible say. And that's what I say what the Bible says. That's why every time you come to church, we're going to say, turn your Bible here. We're going to say, turn your Bible there. Turn your Bible here. Turn your Bible there. I want you to see what God is saying, not what the pastor is saying. Right. I meditate tonight that the being back to stand for what? Biblical authority. But tonight, we're going to talk about this subject. We're going to be long. We're going to talk about this. The A in back to stand for the autonomy of the local New Testament Baptist church. He said, that was autonomy. The word autonomy is the right or condition of self government. Freedom from external uh, uh, control or influence is independence. Right. So the word autonomy is this, that nobody can tell the church what to do. Uh -huh. So we free from external uh, 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 control. Uh, nobody can come in and say, hey, I want y'all to have y'all service at 5 o'clock instead of 6 on Sunday evening. They can say, well, I want y'all to have y'all service on Wednesday. I want y'all to have it on Thursday. Ain't nobody here to tell us, well, I don't want y'all to I don't want go soul with it. I, 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 I'm down to cut that out. I don't want you to preach this, Pastor, but not that. See, when you are trying to be listening now, that means you self-govern. You don't have a government from the outside to what you do. You are governed by the what? Bible. Now the Bible is what? So the Lord. See, the Bible governors, it's a word autonomy that we free from any control from the outside. Which means we're an independent church. That's why we independent fundamental Baptist. That's how you that's what we are. We're independent fundamental Baptist. We're not missionary Baptists like the rest of the church. They're part of, they're not autonomous. They, they, they have people from the outside tell them what to do. If you want to say you to have a missionary Baptist church, they all, they all have the same Sunday school career. Are y'all with me? They all have the same Sunday school career. And they all talk about the same lesson every Sunday. Why? Because they have somebody from the outside sending them a curriculum to tell them what they teach on that Sunday. And so by all that autonomy, we, I mean, we, we are an independent church. And which means that by being independent, get this time for the first truth tonight. By being independent, that means that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. See what independent church is. All somebody tell them to do here is the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ is the head of the what? Church. And so by being the head of the church, he tells us what to do. No government, no deacon, uh, nobody from the outside, nobody from the inside. You can't tell how to, what to preach, you can't tell what to teach. If you said, Pastor, I don't believe the soul went in, I said, well, you're in the wrong church. Amen. Can we believe the soul in here? So this is all time here. Hear me out tonight. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and so he's the only person who can tell the church how to operate. He's the only person who can tell the church how to operate. Turn your Bible to Russian chapter number one. So these are some doubts we're going to hit down about the church. See, a lot of people don't want to buy it on Brother Bell. And so, when they don't want to buy it, it hurts them. When people don't know sound doctrine, it really hurts me or you if we don't know biblical teaching. And so, y'all you need to understand about this autonomy of a local church that is self government. So, therefore, by we being self government, we don't get money from the government. We don't get money from them. So, they don't pay our bills. They don't pay the pastor. You see what I'm saying? And so, we're a self government church. Our church should take care of self. You know, we're still a new church, man. And so we're not, we are, we, we still receive support from different churches, but God will our church one day to be a self government church as well. We take care of our own bills. God pay the pastor and the church will pay the bills and, and we become a, 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 a church to take care of self. Right now we're receiving support. But at the same time, Jesus is still the head of the what? Church. He's the head, y'all. And so therefore, and what he say, not what you say. And what he say, not what I'm saying. And so you might want to say, say, well, I just feel like the church should do this. Well, it's not how you feel or how I feel. What do Jesus have to stand by? Why? Because he's the head of the what? Church. Look at the Bible says here now in verse number 13. Y'all best say amen. amen. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says, who have delivered us from the power of what? And have translated us into the kingdom of his what? And whom we have redemption through his blood, which is Jesus, even the forgiveness of the what? Amen. Who is the image of the invisible what? The firstborn of every creature, for by him, 
for all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominion or principalities of power, all things were created by him and for what? Him. And he is before what? All things, and by him all things what? He is the head of what? Body of the what? Church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, and all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father in him to all the fullness what? Y'all listen to me tonight. So who's the head of the church? Jesus. Body. Body of the Lord and the Savior baptized. We are the body of Christ. He said, which is the what? Church. Jesus the head of the church, y'all. He is the head. And so by him being the head, he tells the church what to do. The Bible says, husband, love the wife that Christ love the church. It's a husband is the head of the wife that Christ is the head of the what? So the father the head, the husband the head of the wife, and Christ is the head of the what? Church. So Christ tells the church what to do. And so that's why we're autonomous. That's why we're independent Baptist, I mean, father of the Baptist church. Because we have no external uh, people telling what to do. We self governance you know what I'm saying? We have nobody on the outside control us. But you know, you read the book of the Bible, you see that Paul wrote to the church of what? Wow. He went to the church of Calvary. He went to the church of Galatians. He went to the church of Ephesians. He went to the church of Philippians. He went to the church of Colossians. All of us walk the churches in different cities. And he would write a letter to them and tell them how that the thing they're doing is not right. They got some track of some things. And Paul wrote a letter addressing that local what? Church. And so we're a local church here in Greenville, Mississippi. We're a local church now. We, we located in Greenville, Mississippi. And we're a visible church. And somebody came here today to want to come visit our church. We are a visible church. We're not just an invisible church. We are a visible church. And we're an independent, fundamental Baptist church. We independent because all of them are supposed to control the church of Jesus. So when we have somebody from the outside control the church, they mean they take authority from who? Jesus. And so they came to tell them what to do and how to do and what to do. Guess who we control the church? Jesus will not be the head of the church. They'll be the what? Hey. But Jesus, he's the head. So that's why we must be. And we have to be an independent, fundamental Baptist church. Because we are, that we are open that an independent is the way to go. Because why? It gives Jesus the lordship of the what? Church. And we're going to take that Jesus head. And the Bible said, and by him, for all things consist. It said, all we were made for him. So you were made for him. I was made for him. Amen. In the church, he said, on this rock. I will be in my what? Church. In the case of hell, when I'm prevailing, he said, my church. So Jesus, I'm going to be in my church. So that means that, that's possessive. That means he owned the church. He said, I'm going to be a child having a church, a brother bell church, or some other church. Like, on this rock, I will be in my church. So the church belongs to the Lord Jesus. And by the church belongs to him. Because he puts the church with his what? blood. And so we are the church, not the people. We, the people, belong to Jesus. Do you know your body is not so no more? That your body is a temple to what? Holy Ghost, which is in you, but you, you have been bought for a price and you're not your own. And so you are belong to Jesus. And by you belong to Jesus, I belong to Jesus. So Jesus tells us what to what? Do. Because we individually have been saved by the grace of God. And we individually have been baptized into the local church. And so therefore we are a part of the body of Christ. And by that that means Christ is not the head of the building. He's the head of our what? Life. We come here to assemble together. In a local assembly, and Christ is the head of our life. Now we gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now, by Him being the head of all our life, we can't have Him out on the outside to come tell us to do. That means why? Because Christ is the head of the church. Amen. But a lot of people are saying this doctrine. Autonomous. That means that we are independent. That if Jesus Christ tells the church how to what? Right. Operate. And the problem we have today, y'all, is this. That the church, the government trying to tell the church how to do things, and all of that. The city trying to tell the church how to do things, and all these different people trying to tell the church how to do things. I'm going to tell you something going right. Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. I say the church, y'all, when we want to build something, y'all go to the city and make sure you're cold, right? I'm not against that type of stuff. But when it comes down how we operate and how we have our affairs, we go to the Bible to see what the Bible got to say. Now, why? We are an independent, local New Testament Baptist church. And Jesus, the head of the church, and it's all about what he say. Amen. Amen. So to be in the Baptist staff autonomy means self-government, independent, free from external uh, control of what? Look at the Bible say, go to Acts chapter number five. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. This sound doctrine gives me. Boy, I'm very hard to find. Sister Tammy, it's hard to find some sound doctrine in churches today, Brother Bill. It's hard. You'll go there, man. 
And this is harder. You, it, it, it ain't, people ain't getting, they ain't getting grounded. They ain't getting taught the doctrine. Now, the most part said doctrine not important. They said doctrine break the vision. It goes to break the vision. Uh, and listen, they not right now, but once you, do, once you divide the sheep from the goats, huh? Hey, don't you, once you, hey, once you put your dog around some rattlesnakes, hey, hey, the vision is, hey, doctrine supposed to divide. And so we live in society and say, don't make doctrine important. Have you start breaking the doctrine here? And on the side of the line, we're going to divide you all in the current together. No, if you teach it that salvation is through works, I can't, I can't even joke up with you. If you teach that baptism saves people, I mean, and I'm saying the Bible says salvation uh, is through Christ, but you said more than that kind of save people. Speaking in tongues save people. How many good save people? And so the Bible said, no, Jesus saved. So doctrine going to divide our relationship. That I means I can't joke up with you, and I'm, I'm not going to come you can't put your mind because you teach a different doctrine. And they can't, once I came here on uh, Sunday, said you got to get baptized over there. Once my came here Sunday night, so you got speaking tongues. Then next Wednesday, I know I know a fellow up here. He said that if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you got baptized in a certain church, you ain't going to heaven. I mean, I had these different people come here, preach all these doctrines before you know it, you be confused. And so doctrine is very important. And Paul said, continue them, because you'll save thyself and them they hear thee. Paul put a lot of emphasis on it. Why can Jesus talk to him? Why can Jesus hear the what? Church. Acts chapter number 5, verse 29. When y'all get that, say amen. amen. Acts chapter number 5, verse number 27. Acts chapter number 5, verse 27. <coughs> the Bible said, and when they have brought them, they set them before the what? Council. We have a city council here too, y'all know that? We have a city council. And these old boys apostles, they got brought before the council. And look what the Bible said. And a high priest asked them, saying, Did not we say the command that you should not keep in his name? And behold, you have filled your room with your what? Doctrine. See, you have filled your room with your what? Doctrine. So the apostles went around talking about the doctrine that Christ gave them. See? And now there's a high priest that say, Hey, man, you have filled your rules with your doctrine. Did we not tell you not to teach in his name? And you have filled this whole country with the doctrine of the Bible. Look, we said, look they said. And the Bible said, Intended to bring this man blood upon us. Uh, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than what? You see? So these counselors, when they try to tell them that, you can't talk about this man. Have you brought a man blood on? Hey, don't, don't talk about this doctrine. But the apostles, hold on, hold on, listen. We ought to obey God rather than what? God, Jesus, the head of the church. He said, I know y'all see the councils. He said, I know y'all the high priest. He I know who y'all are. But he's gonna let y'all know something I he's gonna let y'all know that we ought to obey God rather than man. Because Jesus is the head of the church and the doctrine we teach him, he told us to teach it, and we will do what Jesus say do, all what man say do, because Jesus is the head of the church and not man, and we are an independent church, and we go about what the Lord Jesus said. We don't care what the council say, we don't care what the high priest say, we don't care what they say. We think we'll do what Jesus say, and he's the head. See, imagine, imagine we deal with the government say. The, the government say, I want you to pray in Jesus' name in the public school, though. Now I want you to bring a Bible. So we can't listen to the government. So it is a blessing. It's a blessing to be an independent Baptist church. Father God, it's a blessing that Jesus tells us what to do. That you ought to obey God rather than what? So people, okay, one day kind of way you can't have the evening service. So you won't go to jail. Get what? I'm having the evening service. Because I'll be God with a man. Well, y'all can't go soul in no more. Y'all can't street preach no more. Well, I'm going to go soul in because God commanded us to go. I'm going to go street preach because God commanded us to go. And so he said, well, I'm going to put you in jail. That's what they call me, though, boy. If you want to do what we say, I'm going to put you in jail. Amen. Hey, what that old boy said, we got to obey God rather than what? Amen. So why? Because God is the head of the church and the being Baptist and for biblical authority that we obey God which is through the Bible and we do what he say instead of what man say. So the A in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Baptist and autonomy of the local church which means we, we self-government we an independent church. Look at my uh, sub-point right here. Listen to me now. G Christ has given the authority to the church to handle an affair within the church. Y'all listen to me well now. I think this is some strong stuff here now. God Jesus Christ has given the church of authority to handle affairs of things in church. He gave it between ourselves. So it's this thing happening in church. Like we have authority by the Lord Jesus to handle here. Then we ain't got to call them. We ain't got to put other people in our business. Y'all are off the church right now. And so why? Now Jesus is the head of the what? Church. And we're free from external control. 
And so we're an independent fundamental Baptist church. And so if we independent and we free for anybody's control, how do we go down that church business? Right. Huh? So we can see, but how do I? We're a local church. We have, we have a thought about Jesus to judge some things. I'm going to show you now. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's our job to have some affairs. Like we just had a situation two Sunday nights ago. Then, and then I said, we have to hear. We have to get inside the circle. We ain't go Facebook Live with it. Huh? And when we at this show, we ain't call people from the outside to try to see what they think about it. We have some men in the church. Why? How can you do that? Because Lord Jesus Christ, which is the head of the church, have given the church authority to handle his affair within the church. Amen. We have given authority. So the court will be the judge have authority by the state of Mississippi. Have a state, have have the uh, order about the United States of America according to the Constitution, and now a uh, judge in citizenship, brother, been a citizen in the jail in the state will agree with you. Unless they did some things that are wrong in the law, or they or they have they had a trial problem, they did something wrong, and then they have to get their case overturned and get out. And but long that law, long the judge handled the business properly, and that judge even for years, there's nothing you can do about it. You can try having a subpoena and all that type of stuff and try to overturn it and, and have the lawyers. But that judge did think about the book and then you do why. Because he have authority to what? Judge. The, the judge has authority to what? Judge. He has that authority. And God has given a local New Testament back the church. He has given us the, the, the authority to judge within the church. You see what I'm saying? Because we're an independent church. I don't go out of the street and tell them what to do. And nor can they come here and tell me how to do it. You see? And so we handle things here according to how Jesus wants to handle them. And we have the authority to handle a different affair. Like we got a problem. We had a the meeting and all that. We got a problem. <coughs> and so I'm like, a, I'm a, and my job is a pastor. I'm an under shepherd. And Jesus is a chief shepherd. And I, 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 I judge for my high and some things. And I have to thought about Jesus as a pastor to make some decisions in the church. Because that's what Jesus did. He's the head. He saw me the pastor and the shepherd. I'm going to give some members of the sheep. And I'm going to have y'all come together and make some decisions about some things. Amen. Like we want to go build a building. Uh, 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 one day we want to build an a extra, uh, some, build more stand. we coming for the church. We'll make some decisions. We ain't got to go to Walmart and ask them can we build a church. We ain't got to go to the government and say can we uh, uh, add on. We're going to vote on it and we're going to go to the city and get our permits. He won't add on. See why? Because Jesus has given authority about to the church to make some decision and, and make some decisions of the affairs in the church. Right. Hope God gets what I'm saying tonight. Look at the Bible, so I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. First Corinthians chapter number six and verse number one. one I think I won't say the verse will be done. First Corinthians chapter six, verse number one. Y'all never say that. The Bible says, There are many of you have a mouth against the what? Go to the law for the unjust and not before the what? So, well, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to make us a beat. And God said, why are you going to the unjust? He said, I dare any of you have a matter against another. Go to the law before the unjust and not before the what? He said, why are you taking some things between the saints to the unjust? Do you know why I'm going to go to court to uh, mark about some beat they have? And, and they're going to say, yeah, what, what, what happened? What happened? They have the King James Bible by the church. They are going to be more than unjust. And unjust, I thought you were church for way of acting like this. Right. And Paul said, I bet any of you have a matter against another, go to the unjust and not to the what? Saints. He said, why do you go to the unjust people when you go to the saints? That the church, he writes the church of Corinth in here. Don't forget, this is a church of Corinthians. And he writes this and why am I going outside the church to have a big that we got people in the church that can have a big? Got the church is independent. God has given us authority to make some decisions within the church. Mm -hmm. Like the judge. When they have a judge, they have a, when you go to trial, they have 12 members, don't they? And I remember going to make some decisions about they feel like the person is innocent or guilty. They have authority by the state to do that because they've been hired as a uh, jury duty. Right. And so God has hired, and we, He hired, but we saved it. And this is church. We got to remember, we come together and say, hey, y'all, remember what y'all think about this? Hey, what y'all think about this? You heard what they say to you. You heard the situation. Hey, y'all, let's, 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 let's get this thing right. He said, I'm there. Paul said, why are you doing this? Let's go on verse number two. He said, do you not know that the saints should judge the what? World. Do you know when they will judge the world, y'all? He said, do you know? He said, why are y'all going to the unjust? He said, do y'all know one day the saints going to judge the world? We don't be with God and we don't judge the world. He says, So why are y'all going to unjust? We got a thought of my God to judge the world one day. Look what he 
said, Amen. He said, Do not you know that the saints should judge the world, and the world should be judged by what? Are you outward to judge the smallest one? He said, If the world will be judged by you one day, he said, You tell me that you can't judge a small amount of one day, God give you authority. I mean, I'll give you authority. Now we got Christians, and they, they, they're Christian, they're Christian, we're suing each other. A Christian, we're suing other Christians. If you got somebody hit your car, man, you're talking about passing a no, that's, that's, that's talked about in the church. Like the hound is in the church, man. We, we believe, we about to sue one another. We ain't gonna sue one another, we ain't gonna amongst ourselves. Why? Don't the Bible say, he said, we don't judge the world, we're not judge the small amount. He said, you better judge this whole world, and you tell me, you, tell me, you, ain't gotta, you can't judge the smallest amount. Right. I'm telling you, we got going on there. I'm gonna help y'all out. So this is part of our message anyway, because I've been talking about Baptist, so don't say we're a pastor, we're just a message and what's going on in the church. Now this part of the message, this part of what we've been talking about, sound done about being a Baptist. Now we have today, people go on the outside talking about the church. That's true. They talk about what problem they have with the pastor, what problem they have with the member. Instead of coming to the pastor, the members come to the church and say, we got a problem with this. They are going on the outside. And start telling them to get to the outside to the unsaved folks. And so the unsaved folks say, well, man, hold on, that church is a hypocrite. Man, I'm supposed to be a hypocrite. That pastor's a hypocrite. And, and you remember, without you knowing, you are hindering people from getting saved because you begin to tell them what's going on in the church. Amen. That's true. See? And so God said, do you not know that we can judge the world? You hey, I got a question for you tonight. Tell me what's going on at the, at the, at the, at the, at the uh, lodge. It's a lodge right now in Colorado. It's large and many amounts of green belt. They miss you. You don't know what's going on in the lodge. Right. You don't know what's going on in the fraternities. They won't tell you nothing. They, they call it a secret society. But church folks, they're going to run their mouth. They'll put on Facebook. They'll put on Instagram. They'll put on everybody here on social media about what's going on in the church. But you'll never see a mason that he wearing a G on his bubble, that G on his cars. You'll never hear a mason say nothing about a mason on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that. But the church folks will go on social media and talk about the church and a mason will be ready to hell and they say God, they say G stands for God, but if G don't stand for God, I'm going to say, but you'll never hear him say that the bad about them, but son of God. But Christians, we're going to faith, we're going to put our business out there. Well, this going on in church, this happened. And they first did something to me in the church. Mm -hmm. On social media. Well, why are you going to come to the church? If you got a problem with church, don't take it on social media. Bring it to the church. And let us handle this business. Let us come together and fix the problem. Don't go on social media. You go to the unjust and go to them to try to let them judge God. And no, you look at the same one and judge the world. Right. Y'all know I'm right at that. Amen. Huh? Matter of fact, people don't come, don't do a biblical. Do you know people don't do many biblical men in these days? Let's go on, y'all. I'm some burning with prayer. <coughs> the Bible said, Know you not that we should judge what? Angels. They don't judge angels one day. He said, How much more things that pertain to this what? So, <laughs> first we're going to judge the word, Brother Bill. Then he said, We're going to judge what? Angels. He said, Can we not judge the small things of this life? So you tell me, I, I, we can't judge Brother Bell and Madeline Monet by something. That took place outside of church. You tell me that we're going to judge the world, we can't judge angels, and we can't judge between Monet and, and Brother Bell that got beat. And we can't judge this all now. Mm -hmm. Are we not, come on, the small thing, God's going to judge the world. Can we not judge, hey, Brother Bell and Monet, let's hear about what's going on. That's how this, that's how this, this business in the church. We ain't going to go on social media about it. We ain't going to go straight in about it. We're going to handle it in the church. Why? Can we have the authority by the Lord Jesus? To handle different affairs that take place in the church. Mm -hmm. So why are people going outside trying to get help from the inch that come to the church? Right. Hey, y'all will be not. Amen. So we got Christians going against each other, they beef there, but they take their beef on the outside of the church that they handle the inside. Right. Amen. That's See? Because the Bible said, now I know you know that we should do a name, how about more things that pertain to this book? Right. So we want to judge the world, we want to judge the name and the but now, how can we not judge the smallest amount? How can we not judge the thing pertaining to the life? Hey, Chris, listen to me well now. Why are we taking a church business on the outside? Right. Huh? Why are we doing it? Why are we doing it? Well, Pastor, listen, we got authority. You see, we got authority. We don't judge angels. We don't judge the world one day. And God's people judge the thing pertaining to his what? So why are we going in like that? 
And so we're going on this. I'm telling you what happened. Go to the next verse. What will happen, Brother Bill? You're going to go talk to your family about the church? I'm not even saying, I ain't saying Brother Bill going to talk about it. I'm saying, you're going to somebody going to go and tell your family about what's going on in the church, and your family will start looking down on the church. And one day you get right with God, and your spirit get right and realize you're wrong. Now you're going to be hard for you to get your, your family to come to the church. God, I, I thought you said something wrong with that church. Now you're going back. Hey, you know, you ever talk about born a man, you would tell your family how you'll never go back to him, and, and you'll never be willing to get go back to him. They said, Now you're a fool. So what I'm saying, you know, people go tell them bad about my pastor, go tell them bad about church, it ain't, ain't nothing that bad. It's sinners, you know, that church ain't perfect. So when you got sinners, you're going to have some problems. Right. That's the problem. That's the problem. They know what, matter what church you go to, now who the pastor is, if Jesus pastor, it still will be, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, now, uh, church will be perfect, uh, y'all be here, and I'm here, and we sinners. <laughs> so the pastor will be perfect, but the people in the church won't be perfect. So there's no perfect church. I want to have you perfect when you get to heaven with the Lord. So what I'm saying, don't not listen. You got a problem. Listen to me well now, y'all. Listen to me well. If you got a problem with me, you got a problem with somebody at the church, bring it to me. And we can have it. Bring it to me. You got a problem with me, I ain't about the church, my family. Let's talk about it. We can we gonna judge the world. We can judge angels. You tell me they can judge a smaller thing to the life. Don't take no problem in the church that you have against the church to the outside, bring it to the person inside. They can't do that out there, but we can do somebody here. They can't help you out there, but we help you in here because it's with the church. And so Paul is telling the church, do not go against the church. And uh, outside the church, you got a problem with the church. Let's keep it inside. Let the church judge the small amount. Let's go to bring the world. Four. He said, if you then have judgment of things pertaining to your life, set them to judge who are least in the church. I want to show you how this verse. Go to the first one chapter two. God, God put the roots in my heart for today. I did not written down my notes, but God put the first one chapter number two and verse number 15. When I get this, say amen. amen. The Bible said verse 15, he said, but he that is spiritual judges what? Oh, Yet he himself is judging what? Oh, so the Bible says a spiritual man judges all men. And people tell me God's right judge. Well, I am, I'm a spiritual man. And the Bible says when he's spiritual, he judges what? Oh, so the Bible, God has given a spiritual man. The uh, authority to judge what? All things. You said, what about the judge of folks? Why got authority to do it? <laughs> like a judge? Nobody, nobody did. I know a man about judge, Brother Bill, you know too, and I've both been in a situation. And when a judge made a decision, my ear, and sometimes it will be, it'll be one side to be mad. But if I get sent to 15 years for killing somebody, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be sad. And my man will be mad at the judge. It'll be like a judge that did not disservice. Then the other family will be what? Happy that that, that, that criminal that killed murdered their son is in jail. And so when I make decisions as a pastor, you know, when I make decisions as a pastor, God has given the authority to judge all that because I'm a spiritual man. I'm going to make somebody mad. Right. One family will be happy, the other family will be mad. Right. One person will be happy, the other person will be mad. I don't feel like that I was one side. That, no, President Trump, it's something that I'm happy that he passed his law, that he can't, if you're a legal immigrant, uh, that you need to become a citizen. All people are mad about it. And if, my mother, if you're in authority, and you're in a position, do you know something like always get mad when you make a decision? That's true. You know that? Somebody will get mad. If you got kids, you said, and your kids, you said, and you, this is what your kids say, you whoop one child because they, they, they start a fight, and that one child got, got, got a whoop and going to be mad at the other child. And they'll be mad at you too, because they feel like if you took the other child's side. And so when you make judges, when you make decisions, something will be mad at you. But the Bible says, but he did his spiritual judge of what? So I'm not about to tell you, well, you can't don't judge me. Oh, yes, you can. Tell me, that's not a, a, a person, yeah, I work a person, tell me, you ain't judging me on the God. So tell me, so I, I said, one day I'm going to judge the angels, one day I'm going to judge the world, and the Bible says, yeah, spiritual judge the world. Amen. So we got authority, y'all. Say it again before we move on to the last thing. If you got a problem with somebody in church, go to them first. And you go to them first, they, they don't want to reconcile, come to me. Right. And I go to the first time. And then I don't want to repent and get right, then we bring them before the church. But let's handle things in the church, y'all. I believe we do it the good the way God will bless you. Like I said, we got a situation going on right now. You see, they, 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 want, they, they take the problem, instead of keeping it in the church, they take the problem to social media. They bring they take it to the outside. And what will happen, and look what happened. When you start doing that, it will be hard for God to get hold to your heart. Because you're doing it wrong. But if you got a problem, let's keep it in the church, and God can work. God can move. Anytime we do things the 
my way. We do it according to God's way. God will bless it. Amen. I'm just saying, that's just a heart tonight. We're talking about the A Baptist. I turned on the Lord Church last week, y'all. Many of you were so poor. I'll slow down with this. I said, Christ had given authority to the church to handle his affair within the what? Church. Some form B is going to be done. Christ had given authority to the church to handle a brother or sister in Christ who is living in sin. So God had given the church authority. We got a brother and sister that live in sin. God had given us authority how to handle the situation. And this is the last verse. Let's go to the first of the chapter number five. I will be done with this. We have got we have to get up on about Lord Jesus, how to handle a brother or sister in Christ that didn't see. See, the purpose of this with this read here, we know the first of the chapter number five. When y'all get this say amen. amen. First of the chapter five, verse one. The Bible says it is reported, reported common that there is what? Among you, in such fornication is not so much name as among the Gentile that one should have his father what? So check this out, Brother Bell. We have a man in the church of the church of Corinth having sex with his dad and wife, which is his stepmom. So he committed fornication, and Paul said, This thing is not even named on the Gentile, which is the unsaved you. He says, We got the same man and the same woman, and she cheated on her husband with her stepson. And it's plantation of the church. And Paul tried to hurt about it. He said, Well, even I'm saying he's going to do all that foolishness. And the Bible says, Verse number two. This happened in the church, right? Y'all heard it? It happened in the church. And verse number two. And you are puffed up and have not rather moan that he that have done this deed might be taken away from my mom. What? He said, So the people in the church said, Man, that guy's mom, man. That man, he know it, man. That man had his, his dad and wife. Man, he got to be a player. And they popped up about it. And instead of being mourning and crying and weeping about this, they tapped the young man on the back and said, Man, how you do that, man? How did you get your dad's wife, man? And so they, they, they popped up about it. They said, Man, we have to find out, church. They got his dad and wife, his stepmom. They popped up about it. This thing ain't going on in the what? Church. Don't forget that this is in the book of Corinthians. I want to try to teach you all this. It's in the book of Corinthians, you're going, in, going on in the church of Corinth. So Paul writes this letter. He said, Report a comment that there's one occasion among what? You. In the church. And look at the Bible saying now. He said that, he said, and he said, you are puffed up and, and rather not. He said, let me say verse number two again, y'all. He said, you are puffed up and have not rather what? That he that have done the deed may be taken away from one what? You. Paul said, why you ain't both this guy out the church? He said, why have y'all both these guys here? Why y'all puffed up about it? Why did I reckon that y'all ain't going? Why y'all ain't taking away from y'all? He said, why do y'all still got this guy in the what? Church. Church. Look at Mark chapter verse 3. He said, if I'm barely absent in the body, but present in the what? Spirit. Have judged already. Paul said, I'm not even there in the body. He said, I'm there in the spirit. He said, I have already judged. He said, I ain't there, but I'm already judged. Why? Because he that is spiritual judges. All they see. And Paul said, I'm not there in the body, but I'm there in the spirit. I'm already judging. Some people say, Well, man, pass you when you're there. I ain't no happen. I was there in the spirit. Because uh -huh. Paul said, He said, I judge already. Even though I'm not there in the body, even though I'm there in the spirit. And look at the Bible said, and I, as I thought I was, no, he said, for verse 35, there that after the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already, though I was what? See, he said, I'm telling you, if I'm already there. He said, the certain that have so done is what? Verse 4, in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of my Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one to, the, to Satan for the destruction of what? That the spirit might be what? In the name of our Lord Jesus. Paul said this, y'all. He said, y'all need to see him. I want y'all to hear this guy to the devil. I don't know, I don't know, I deliver a lot of people from them for the destruction of flesh. That they still might be the saved that they will need. I have delivered a lot of people in the church. I have delivered up to the devil for the destruction of flesh. And so Paul said, why are y'all puffed up? Why are y'all not mourning? Why are y'all having judged this thing? He said, but I'm not there, but I've already judged in the spirit. He said, I'm, I'm judging if I'm already there. That y'all should put this man away from among you. He said, one thing you need to do, y'all need to turn this man over to what? Satan. Turn him over to Satan. And 
care what? When they turn them over to Satan, mind, get what he did. And get what he did when they turn them over to Satan. This is bad. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Bad verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. They turn them over to Satan, right? Now don't forget, they turn over to Satan. This man had to say to his father, I. Right? And Paul said, I want y'all to turn that man over to what? Satan. When Satan gets hold to y'all, when you get hold of me, we backslide, get out of church, and man, listen to me, you get, and somebody turn over to the devil, man, when the devil gets hold to you, it won't stop, stop happening, never happened to you before. And so I, hear, I see my wife say, Pat, did you turn over to the devil? <laughs> yeah, I did. And, and I turned a lot of y'all over. And not for the hurt you, but to get you back to God. I'm real hot. It's a lot of people coming back in back when the devil gets get done with us. They come, don't worry about it. They coming back. And then what we're gonna do? We're gonna send them back. <laughs> but now say, no, you can't come back here. We're gonna tell them, ask God to give them, and ask you what? Church for you. And y'all are gonna welcome you back into the fall. Repentance. Glad we're gonna let you go on. Chapter in chapter number two. In first uh number what? I'm gonna read verse number six. Y'all better say amen. The Bible says, sufficient to such a man as this punishment, which will afflict their blood. So that country you ought to rather forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed with over much blood. Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love, what? See? This is a young man that when he got delivered to the devil, get what happened? This young man was swallowed with over much sorrow. That devil will warm him out. Then now that Paul said, hey, church, Y'all need to forgive him and let him come back to church. He said, forgive him. He said, because he ready, he won't forgive us. The devil did his job. Now we're trying to bring him back. And the Bible said, let him come back to church. So what I'm saying, when people get out, our brothers and sisters live in sin, it's our job to, to, and it's our job to judge the situation. And it's our job to down the repentance to vote him out. Listen to me now. And turn him over to Satan. And then once they say get down with them, we pray that they come back in repentance and want to get right with God and get right with the church. And once they want to get right with God and the church, we let them come back. And Paul said, let the young man come back to That man messed around with women. Man, my father wife. But Paul said this, let him come back to church. Because he, he, he repented. He wanted to get right with what? God and the church. So you see why we do some things? Because we have authority. We have authority by the Lord Jesus to judge the affairs of our church. We have a thought of the Lord Jesus when our brothers and sisters live in sin. We have a thought of the Lord Jesus to vote them out. And now we're going to get right. And we have a thought of the Lord Jesus to turn them over to what? Satan. And don't forget that we have authority of the Lord Jesus to be an independent, follow them about church. And so the only thing I tell them to do is the Lord what? So the, the Lord won't tell you how the church that bit like they might be. They won't tell you a brother and sister that live in sin. They won't tell you how to like it. But Jesus tells them just how to handle when a person lives in their what? They also tell you how to handle a brother and sister that are for one another. It's a tell them to go to the outside and get the help. Stay in the church and get your way. God won't judge the world, we'll judge the angels. Well, why are we independent? Because we're self dubbed the church. Jesus, the head of the church. And A and a, and a Baptist stand for autonomous. So we self dubbed we independent. No, from, we, nobody tells us what we're doing outside. All somebody tells us what we do in the Bible. So that's why we're blessed with it. And y'all are so blessed. I'm so blessed to be pastor and independent. Father of the Baptist Church. Boy, God, we've been, we've been in trouble. The outside will tell us. The convention, they got conventions. I ain't going to all that night. They tell people how to handle their church. You know, some church, they, they change pastors every three or five years. Like the Methodists and the Lutherans, every three or five years, they change pastors' the salvation army. Because the church don't run it up itself. It's the people on the outside that run it. And they tell them you got to change the pastor. And they send a pastor that they want to come. So the church will have them say so. It's what the convention tell them who the pastor will be. Here, I'm going to stay here to Jesus and believe. <laughs> it's going to have a three or five years new pastor come. And I'm, I'm done. I go to now I'm from, I'm, I might be from Africa. They send me to Greenville. Or then next they might send me to Alabama. The, the Lord Jesus Christ told me to come here. And nobody tell me to Jesus and believe. Unless I see it. I come in the dust. Then I get voted out as the pastor. But today, I'm going to stay here to Jesus. See the point. You see the good thing about being in there. There's a blessing, though. So I hope tonight, if you need to get anything, then I hope you get tonight. By being independent. But also, I want to get it how we handle the church affairs. That we got to hold it. And so, Brother Bay, her problem is coming to me, brother. Don't go to the outside. 
Mike got a problem with me, got a problem, my wife got a problem with a member of the church, a sister, a brother of the church, come to me. And we'll talk about it, and I don't talk to anybody. We'll bring them in, talk to anybody, and we'll sit around as a family and talk about the situation. At least one y'all tell y'all the story of what happened. And then from there, by me being a pastor, I'm a spirit man, I'm going to make my judgment. And one y'all will be mad when I make it. But don't leave the church. Because one of y'all, they seem I'm going to take one of y'all's sides. But I'm not taking sides, I'm just judging according to the Bible. So don't leave the church where a pastor takes side. I know I'm trying to do what's right. And I might make some phone judgment because I'm a what? Man. And I might not see what I should have seen because I'm a man. And I might not know what I need to know because I'm a man. So I might make a wrong decision in a situation, but have some mercy on it. Knowing that my pastor is trying to do the best he can. He made a mistake on a judgment, but I know my pastor loved me. And I, I made a mistake. I come before you and say, Maya, I'm sorry, y'all, I made a mistake. Between, I made a decision between Maya and Monet, and I was wrong on a situation. Maya was right, and Monet was wrong. I, I, I made Monet the right judgment instead of Maya. And I'm going to church because I forget now. I come to church that y'all forget. But don't leave. Because I'm a human being. I, you don't know how to perfect. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some wrong judgment. I'm going to let y'all know I'm going to make some wrong judgment based on because I'm a man. But be merciful toward me. I got to be merciful towards you when you make some wrong decisions. Amen. But we enter to the church on clothed and pray. Are we independent? Jesus said, and we have all our affairs within the world. And we did like that brother Bill. And think about it. That situation you, you seen this Sunday. One of the situations we were brought to pastor. It ain't different. I'm telling you, we're gonna lose, we're gonna, we're gonna lose a family. We lost a family because they don't want to do it the biblical way. They don't want to do it the biblical way. No, so let's do it the biblical way, man. Let's do it right. And let's do it uh, according to the Bible. Let's pray. Y'all don't pray these prayer requests here. I know most of y'all plan to be saved. And so we're going to go and pray these prayer requests that we have here tonight. And so y'all.